Welcome to Divorces in North Carolina, Sandra Dinkins. Are you going through a divorce and feeling overwhelmed? Divorce can be like riding an emotional roller coaster. One moment you're up, feeling a sense of relief or newfound independence, and the next you're plummeting into a pit of anger, anxiety, regret, guilt, and depression. It's a whirlwind of emotions that can leave you feeling drained and disoriented. Picture anger, the hot, blazing fire that consumes everything in its path. It's a natural response when you feel wronged or betrayed. It's your mind's way of saying, this is not right. However, while anger can fuel action, it can also lead to destructive behavior if not managed properly. Then comes anxiety, the gnawing worry that keeps you up at night. The uncertainty of what lies ahead can be crippling. What will happen to my finances? How will the kids cope? It's like a dark cloud that hovers, casting a shadow over your every thought. Regret and guilt often go hand in hand. If you've initiated the divorce, you might feel guilty for breaking up the family. If you're on the receiving end, you might regret not doing enough to save the relationship. These emotions can weigh heavily on your heart, like a thousand bricks pressing down on you. If you are getting value from this video, please consider subscribing. And finally, there's depression. It's more than just feeling sad or upset. It's a deep, profound sadness that can make even getting out of bed a Herculean task. It's like being trapped in a dark room with no windows or doors, a sense of hopelessness that can be all-consuming. Now it's crucial to understand that it's okay to feel these emotions. They're a part of the healing process, but it's equally important not to let them control you. Engaging in self-pity or negative thoughts can be a slippery slope to self-destruction. It's like sinking in quicksand. The more you struggle, the deeper you sink. Instead, acknowledge your feelings, let them flow, but don't let them steer your life. Remember, you're the captain of your ship. You decide the direction you want to sail in. Even in the stormiest of seas, you have the power to steer towards calmer waters. Consider sharing this video with someone who is experiencing the trauma of divorce. Remember, it's normal to feel these emotions, but letting them control you can lead to self-destruction. Have you ever heard the saying, forewarned is forearmed? It's a truth that holds particularly relevant when navigating the labyrinthine nature of divorce. But, where do you start? Well, it begins with becoming a student of divorce. Yes, you heard it right. The more you learn about the process, the better equipped you are to handle it. Understanding your state's specific divorce laws and procedures is paramount. This is not a one-size-fits-all situation. Each state has unique laws regarding division of assets, child custody, alimony, and more. So, becoming familiar with these laws in your state puts you in a better position to make informed decisions. Check out my video, Divorces in North Carolina, Sandra Dinkins. What are the requirements for divorce in North Carolina to learn more? Now, this might seem difficult, but remember, you don't have to become a legal expert overnight. Simply aim to gain a basic understanding of the process. There are numerous resources available to help you comprehend these laws. Look for reliable online resources, read books, attend seminars, or even consider joining a support group. As you delve deeper into your understanding, the fog of uncertainty begins to lift. Gaining knowledge not only empowers you, but also saves you time and money. How so, you ask? Well, the more you understand the process, the more efficient your conversations with your attorney become. You'll be better equipped to ask pertinent questions and understand their advice. This means less time spent in clarification and more time spent on strategizing for your case. The journey of divorce is a turbulent one, but knowledge can be your anchor. It offers you a sense of control in a situation where you might feel you have none. It grants you the confidence to make decisions that are best for you and your family. Remember, the aim here is not to replace your attorney, but to complement their expertise. Your understanding of the process can facilitate a smoother, more constructive dialogue with your legal counsel, ultimately leading to a more favorable outcome. The more you understand the process, the less intimidating it becomes. So arm yourself with knowledge and take control of your journey through divorce. Keeping your emotions bottled up inside can be harmful. It's crucial to find a safe and healthy outlet. The emotional turmoil of a divorce can feel like a pressure cooker. It's a swirl of anger, regret, guilt, and depression. All these feelings, if left unattended, can lead to a destructive path. But here's the thing, you don't have to go through it alone. One of the most effective ways to release these pent-up emotions is through venting. Yes talking it out. Now this doesn't mean you should unload your feelings onto just anyone who'll listen. Instead, seek out a trusted therapist or confide in a close family member. 
When you vent, you're not merely releasing your feelings into the void, you're giving them a name acknowledging their existence and in doing so, you start to understand them better. You might even begin to see patterns, triggers, or discover underlying issues you weren't aware of. Seeing a therapist offers a professional perspective. They can guide you through your emotions and provide coping strategies to help you navigate your journey. But therapists are not the only option. Sometimes a trusted family member or friend can provide the comfort and understanding you need. They know you, they love you, and they want to see you overcome this tough time. Sharing your feelings with someone else can also provide much needed relief. It's like letting out a deep breath you've been holding for too long. Suddenly, you're not carrying this enormous weight by yourself. It's shared, it's lighter, and it becomes more manageable. Moreover, venting can provide a new perspective. Hearing your feelings and thoughts spoken aloud can often shine a light on things you hadn't considered before. It can help you see the situation from a different angle, perhaps even find a silver lining you hadn't spotted before. So remember, it's okay to feel all those emotions. It's okay to be angry, to feel guilt, to experience regret. It's okay to be human, but it's not okay to let these feelings consume you. Don't keep them bottled up. Don't carry your emotional burden alone. Share it with someone you trust. The divorce process can be stressful, but it's essential to find ways to avoid conflict and relax. It's not always easy, but keeping the peace with your ex-spouse can make the process smoother and less emotionally draining. Let's explore some strategies. Firstly, it's vital to maintain open communication with your spouse. You don't have to be best friends, but a respectful dialogue can prevent misunderstandings and unnecessary conflicts. Remember, it's about finding common ground for the sake of resolution, not rehashing old arguments. Secondly, you can avoid conflict by keeping your emotions in check. This doesn't mean suppressing your feelings but rather managing them healthily. Express your emotions through journaling or talking with a trusted friend instead of letting them boil over into a heated exchange with your ex-spouse. Next, let's talk about relaxation. It's so crucial during this stressful time. One effective method is meditation. Just a few minutes a day can help clear your mind and reduce stress. Check out my video. Daily Meditations Sandra Dinkins Exercise is another excellent way to relax. Physical activity releases endorphins. The body's natural mood lifters. A brisk walk, a yoga class, or even a dance session in your living room can do wonders for your well-being. Additionally, pursuing a hobby can provide a much-needed break from the stress of divorce. Whether it's painting, gardening, or playing an instrument, Hobbies not only occupy your mind, but also provide a sense of accomplishment and joy. Avoiding conflict and finding relaxation isn't about ignoring the reality of your situation. It's about taking care of your emotional and physical health so that you can navigate this challenging time with resilience and grace. The journey may be tough, but remember, you're tougher. Remember, your well-being matters. Find peace amidst the chaos. The negativity can cloud your judgment and hinder your progress. Let's embrace positivity. Positivity, my friends, is more than just a mindset. It's a tool, a weapon you wield to combat the trials life throws at you. And during a divorce, it's a beacon that guides you through the stormy seas of emotional turmoil. Imagine positivity as your compass. When you're lost in a forest of self-doubt, regret, and guilt, it points you towards the clearings of self-acceptance, forgiveness, and hope. It's that inner voice that whispers, you're stronger than this, you can overcome. Now let's talk about positive self-talk. It's the art of being your own cheerleader, of feeding your mind with affirmations that uplift your spirit and bolster your resolve. It's waking up each morning and telling yourself, I will handle today with grace and courage, or I am more than my circumstances. Positive self-talk isn't about denying the pain or the struggle. It's about acknowledging them, but also recognizing that they don't define you. You are not a failure because your marriage ended. You are not less worthy of love or happiness. You are a human being, capable of growth, resilience, and immense strength. Positivity is also about seeing beyond the immediate hurdles. It's about envisioning a future where you've emerged stronger, wiser, and more compassionate from your experience. It's about understanding that every end is a new beginning. But remember, positivity is not a switch you can flip on a whim. It's a garden you need to tend to every day. Water it with positive thoughts, nurture it with self-compassion, and weed out negativity as soon as it sprouts. In the face of adversity, positivity is your shield. It deflects despair, guards against self-pity, and fends off the ghosts of past mistakes. It's your unwavering belief that even though things are challenging now, they will get better.
So, in the throes of your divorce journey, when the nights seem endless and the days heavy with worry, arm yourself with positivity. Speak words of encouragement to yourself. Visualize a brighter tomorrow. Hold on to hope. This too shall pass. Keep reminding yourself. In times of distress, we may be tempted to engage in harmful or illegal activities. Resist the urge to do that. Check out my video. Divorces in North Carolina. Sandra Dinkins. Resist the urge. The consequences of marital misconduct. Divorce can be a time of profound emotional turmoil, a period when we are more vulnerable than ever to making poor decisions. It's understandable to want to escape the pain, to seek solace in distractions, or even to retaliate against perceived injustices. However, it's crucial to remember that we must maintain our integrity and legality throughout the process. When we're swept up in the storm of emotions, it's easy to lose sight of the bigger picture. We may be tempted to act out of anger, frustration, or desperation. We might feel the urge to hide assets, violate custody agreements, or engage in other forms of misconduct. But remember, these actions offer only short-term relief, and they come with long-term consequences. Acting on harmful impulses can lead to legal repercussions, damage your reputation, and even harm your relationships with your children or other loved ones. More than that, it can hinder your personal growth and healing process. It's like putting a band-aid on a wound that needs stitches. It might cover up the problem for a while, but it won't help it heal. Instead of succumbing to harmful urges, channel your energy into constructive outlets. Focus on understanding and navigating the legal process, on building a support network, on taking care of your physical and mental health. Engage in activities that bring you joy and peace. Surround yourself with positivity. This is not just about getting through the divorce, but about growing and thriving beyond it. Remember, every decision you make during this time is a step towards your future. With each choice, you're shaping what your life will look like post-divorce. You have the power to ensure that future is one of strength, resilience, and peace. So, resist the temptation to engage in harmful behaviors. Stand firm in your integrity. Be patient with yourself. Understand that healing takes time, and it's okay to feel the pain, to struggle, to stumble. Just keep moving forward, one step at a time. Stay on the right path. Your future self will thank you. Divorce is not a battle you have to fight alone. Professionals are here to help, and they come in different forms, each equipped with a unique set of skills to guide you through this complex journey. First, let's talk about divorce lawyers. They are your advocates in the legal realm, your champions in the courtroom. They understand the intricacies of family law, the ins and outs of paperwork, and the strategies for negotiation. Their role is to protect your interests ensure that your rights are upheld and help you navigate the legal maze that is divorce. They are there to answer your questions about the process, but remember, their expertise lies in the law, not in emotional support. Check out my video, Divorces in North Carolina, Sandra Dinkins, Choosing the Right Family Law Attorney. This is where therapists come in. A divorce can stir up a whirlwind of emotions, and therapists are there to help you weather the storm. They provide a safe space for you to express your feelings, fears, and frustrations. They offer tools and strategies to cope with stress, anxiety, and depression. Therapists can help you rebuild your self-esteem, rediscover your identity, and start the healing process. It's essential to allow each professional to handle their area of expertise. Don't turn your divorce lawyer into a therapist, and don't expect your therapist to give you legal advice. Trust that they know their field and can provide the best support in their respective areas. When choosing these professionals, Consider their experience, their approach, and most importantly, how comfortable you feel with them. This is a personal journey, and you want to be sure you're in good hands. Lastly, don't forget about financial advisors. Divorce can have significant implications for your financial situation, and a financial advisor can help you understand and plan for these changes. They can provide guidance on dividing assets, dealing with debts, planning for future expenses, and rebuilding your financial life. Remember, you don't need to know everything. That's what these professionals are for. They are your team, your support system. Lean on them. They have the experience and knowledge to guide you through this challenging time. We've covered a lot today, but remember, you're not alone on this journey. We've journeyed through the emotional roller coaster of divorce, understanding that it's natural to feel anger, anxiety, regret, guilt, and even depression. We've stressed the importance of not wallowing in self pity and negative thoughts. We've talked about becoming a student of divorce, empowering yourself with knowledge about the process. We've touched on the value of venting, 
whether to a therapist or trusted family members, and the importance of avoiding conflicts with your spouse and finding ways to relax. We've highlighted the power of positivity, of avoiding pessimism and engaging in positive self-talk. We've also discussed the importance of resisting harmful urges and the role of professionals in your journey. These are all strategies to cope and grow through this challenging time. Stay informed and stay positive. This is a chapter in your life, not the whole story. This too shall pass.